Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Abigail and thank you so much for clicking on this video. This is episode 9 of Strawberry Stitches Podcast. By the way, I was a little sick so sorry if my voice sounds weird. I might have to cut a lot to cough and I might sound a little bit congested but um, I'm not sick anymore but it's like the lingering side effects of being sick. This is actually my last podcast in this house. Me and my family are moving just across town like 15 minutes away and I almost didn't film this podcast because we're like actually moving this week and the whole basement is packed up so and like all my yarn is in bags and I was like it's gonna be too busy to film a podcast but then I was like no I think I can squeeze it in. It's 10 o'clock a.m. on a Wednesday and I have about an hour and a half <laughs> to get this done. Hopefully I don't ramble on too much but my next video podcast episode 10 will actually be in the new house and it will have a little bit of a different background and I think it'll look really good. Um, I just got used to this background though which is kind of funny. So there's just a little life update. Nothing big but that does mean a lot of my yarn is in like bags so this is how I bagged up some of my stuff so I actually have to take this out because my whips are in here. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started with my finished objects. I'm thinking it's in the thumbnail of the video. I just took pictures but as you can see I am wearing my stunning gorgeous Elizabeth blouse. Love it so much. I need to go to Ravelry. I've started putting my projects in Ravelry. So if you want to go follow me in Ravelry, it's Abigail Make Stuff. And it should be linked in the description. But I'm actually updating it and putting my projects in. I do have my Elizabeth blouse in my Ravelry so I can look at all the specs. But before I do that, I'm just going to like show it to you. It's, oh, and it's a little bit wrinkled from being folded because this has been done for about like two weeks, maybe longer. I don't know how long it's been done, but as you can see, it's this beautiful colored blouse and I did crop it, which I think is cute. I'm wearing jeans today because we have to go do stuff at our new house and... I literally have to leave the house right after I finish this, so I went ahead and got fully ready. So I'm wearing my jeans, and my shirt isn't all the way tucked in, but that's fine. But this is the Elizabeth blouse. It's beautiful, stunning, amazing. I love it so much. And I'm going to go ahead and get into the details. Sit back down. So I started this on March 18th. Sorry if the angle changed, but I was just talking and then my camera shut off. I don't know why, so I really hope everything is fine. I looked back at the clips to make sure nothing was wrong and it doesn't seem like it, but um, I really hope everything works out because I had camera difficulties last video and I really hope I don't have it again, but I'm going to continue on. And hope that everything goes smoothly. <laughs> um, so I started this sweater on March 18th. And I finished it on April 6th. It is the 26th right now. So it has been done for 20 days. So like 3 weeks and not um, 2 weeks. It is knit with one strain of palette in the color Oyster Heather from Knit Picks. And one strain of Tin Silk Mohair in the color Almond. Um, so a fingering plus mohair and I actually don't have the yarn with me or else I would show you but it's like all in a bag buried but I enjoyed the process of knitting this so much I need more tin silk mohair it is amazing yarn I've only worked with drops kits of mohair and knit picks a lot mohair so this is probably the highest quality mohair I've worked with and I do have to say it is a great mohair. I was worried that like my expectations were going to be too high and that I'd be disappointed but I'm not disappointed. I really like that it has 15% wool in it. It's mohair, silk, and wool so it has kind of a high wool content for a mohair and I really enjoy it and there is like 
this is probably one of my favorite sweaters of all time i feel like i could wear it every day i had super high expectations and it worked out i love it whenever my whenever i have high expectations and they are met and i would 10 out of 10 knit it again in like a different color i used the exact same mohair the pattern called for well the pattern calls for cashmere which let's be real i cannot afford cashmere so i went with the second option which was i think the pattern if you don't use cashmere the pattern calls for a strand of sunday i think and a strand of tinsel mohair and the sample petite knit wears is the mohair is actually the almond color in the tinsel mohair and i really liked that so that's i like hunted on etsy to find it and i think i got it from sun yarn studio in my opinion it was kind of affordable it's a bit pricier obviously than like drops kit silk but it's i only needed five skeins of mohair i got six but i only needed five so i think it ended up being like 50 usd palette is cheap and then a bit more of a luxurious mohair it creates a not too expensive sweater so yeah i used five skeins of each so five skeins of palette and five skeins of mohair and i have one skein of each left over well and i'm using the scrap yarn of the palette in another project so the modifications i did for this is i did do quite a few i um sized up half a needle size because i did a gauge swatch i think yeah i did and i did do it in the four millimeter and i hit gauge on four millimeter but I didn't love the fabric, it was a bit too dense for me. So I sized up to half I sized up to four and a half millimeter needles. So the pattern is a 23 stitches and 32 rows. I think I had 22 stitches. So I was fine with that because I wanted a size medium, but I didn't want to do the knitting required to get a size medium. So if you ever feel that way, you can just go up a needle size for a bigger gauge and then go down. A bus size so I did the size small and I think this is a measurement of a medium I haven't measured it yet but it fits exactly how I wanted it to and I cropped the body by quite a bit I think I did the body 16 inches and then I did the same ribbing the pattern calls for I did the tubular bind off everywhere on this pattern which I am super proud of myself for. I have been doing tubular bind off with each pattern that I do because it's quite tedious but it's really worth it and I wish I had done it more with my past knits. Oh and my row gauge was too big so I had to shorten the sleeves. I actually had to like frog a bit of the sleeve because I knit it way too long so the sleeves are one decrease less than the pattern calls for. So I don't know how many rows that is, but it worked out and I have a pretty nice sleeve length and I love the way the sleeves fit. It's like a bit more open. I love everything about the sweater. Easily my favorite knit of the year so far. I love the collar. I wear it with a white t-shirt normally, but I also have a pink t-shirt that looks good with it. And it has like these, this like double knitted sections down the front and then like it crosses over each other and that was a bit tricky to do because I can't read apparently so I did a little I did quite a bit of it wrong and I was having to do it and go back because I was like this does not look like the pictures it looked messy so what I did wrong is whenever it said to like slip from one needle to the other I did it backwards and it did not look good so I, I managed to make it look good. And this was my first time doing Judy's... No, no. It wasn't my first time doing Judy's Magic Cast On. It was my first time doing Judy's Magic Cast On correctly. Because I did it in the weekend headband. And I did not... I did not do it correctly. I should have followed a video. I said this in my last podcast. But I should have followed the video Petite Knit provides. In, in her... Like on her website. And I did not. 
and I actually did follow the video for this and it was super easy and understandable and it's like so seamless what you do is you do Judy's magic cast on and you work the back and front of the collar all the way down and then you do short rows and then you increase the yoke and then you go back and you do these double knitted button bands I guess it's not a button band there's no buttons but that's what I'll call it and then you obviously split for sleeves do the body and the sleeves and it's great and beautiful I will have to say the whole time I was knitting on this I was enjoying it this was the perfect blend of a process knit and a product knit where like I enjoy just everything it was perfect everything about this is perfect if I could change one thing about it I actually don't have anything that I would change like everything about it is great that's me raving about the Elizabeth blouse and I could see myself knitting so many more of these so I think that's all I had to talk about for the Elizabeth blouse that is my only finished object of today's video because I was a little bit sick I was um, a very monogamous knitter these past two weeks so I cast on the Friday tee and I have been knitting on that guy like crazy because we're moving and I was kind of sick the last thing I wanted to think about was casting on and thinking about knitting a fingering weight t-shirt is the best knit for just endless mindless um, knitting so I'm actually gonna get that out and show it to you where is it okay I actually have it in this sock bag. So yeah, this is my first whip. I have seven whips to talk about. I did not knit on a lot of them though, so it'll kind of be brief. This got the most love. So as you can see, it is almost done. This morning before I came down here, I cast, I mean, I picked up stitches for the second sleeve. And as you can see, it's beautiful. Let me put the... Ravelry page. So yeah, this is the Friday Tea by Petite Knit. Um, I'm knitting it on 3.25 millimeter needles, which the pattern calls for 3 millimeter needles. So I did size up and um, that I think that worked out good. I'm knitting this in Drops Flora and Drops pa no, not Drops, and Knit Picks Palette. The same yarn for this sweater. So my scrap yarn, what I had left over for this sweater. I made the stripes so this is drops flora in the color strawberry pink and then palette and oyster heather the flora was actually in my mom's stash but she wasn't using it so it's kind of a stash buster just not my own stash <laughs> so I am calling this a stash buster but because it's like I just randomly cast this on with yarn that I that was just lying around. I feel like I'm having a hard time talking today, so I'm sorry for that. I feel a little bit scrambled, which means I'm gonna have a lot of work to do whenever I'm editing this video. I'm not very eloquent today. So I cast this on on April 8th. What happened is my mom was casting it on and I got jealous, so I was like, do I have any yarn in stash that could be a Friday tee? So I did some swatches. Actually, I'll put a picture here. And then I did an Instagram poll um, of which one I should go for. And this one actually won, which I had already decided that whichever one won, I would do this one anyways. Because I still have enough yarn to do a brown version if I feel like it. The brown one will probably get knit up just... This is the one I wanted to do first. And I would say in 20 days, I've gotten a good progress on this. I feel like I've heard people say this is a slow knit and tedious, but it really helped whenever I was sick and didn't want to think about knitting because it wasn't so mindless that I was like bored because the stripes were so fun. Like the stripes helped um, move this along and for me not to get too bogged down by the fingering weight, tiny needles, endless body. Because I actually counted the stripes in the sample on the picture that, that, that um, Patina is wearing. Because I'm doing an extra small and she has an extra small. 
so I just counted the stripes and it's 22 so I was like once I get to 22 stripes I'll probably be done which I uh, actually my row gauge was a bit bigger and I also didn't want it as long so I did 21 stripes and I think that worked out I haven't tried it on though I only tried it on when I split for sleeves so hopefully it's working out I will probably try it on once I finish the second sleeve I did tubular pined off as opposed to Italian and it looks good it's a little messy I got kind of lazy and didn't do it super clean but I think that'll block out I love the way Italian bind off looks I have to do the double knitting the two rows of double knitting before the sewn bind off because I think it just looks so good yeah so I only am going to have to use four skeins of the main color I I only had four and this is how much of the fourth one I have left and that'll just go into this sleeve and this is my other color this pattern does not call for that much yarn so that's great I'm already like like I'm thinking about all the Friday tees I could knit I don't know if I will knit another one exactly because there's other striped tee patterns out there but it's this pattern has been realized I kind of have a lot of t-shirt striped t-shirt quantities that I didn't realize I had because you can just use scraps for it this is my swatch I had swatched with drops in order beige beige and then the palette and I ended up going with the brighter color so this was my first time really doing a striped garment I did the Marseille sweater in cotton but we don't talk about her she does not look good so this is my officially officially my first striped garment and my first time doing broken rib which I love I love the process of this and I think the only worry I have with it is it's um obviously it's wool and alpaca and it's a summer garment so I'm a little scared but I do live in Canada so hopefully it'll be fine and I can like layer it with a cardigan. I actually really want to knit the corn cardigan by Rebecca Clow from Crayabea. And then a white corn cardigan layered over this would be beautiful for spring and fall. But I don't see myself being able to wear this in like July and August. But maybe I'll get somewhere out of it in May and June maybe. Because it doesn't get too hot here until August and July. And even then it's not really that hot. I came from Arkansas, so this it does not get hot here. And I think that's all I have to say about this pattern. This will definitely be a finished object next video. The only thing slowing me down on this right now, I would have finished it already, except I was like, if I finish it right now, then... We're literally moving, so I can't block it until we move because we have to like pack up the blocking mats and stuff. So there's no point in me rushing to finish this because I won't even really get to wear it. So whenever I realized that, I put it aside and I worked on some of my other whips, which is a great segue into talking about my other whips. So yeah, the whip I actually worked on whenever I realized there's no point in me brushing on this, is I worked on my Louvre sweater by Petite Knit. I don't think I knit on this very much since my last video, but I did split for sleeves. So yeah, oh my goodness, it's so pretty. So yeah, this is my Louvre sweater. Louvre. I feel like sometimes it sounds like I'm saying Louvre sweater. Louvre sweater by Petite Knit in two strands of Drops Wara. As you can see, I am really using up my Drops for a stash. So this was also a scrappy project, kind of. It was like a very, very spur of the moment cast on. I had not planned this. If you haven't watched my last podcast, I talked about how I frogged my half and half wrap. So the scraps of one color in my half and half wrap went into this. And then the scraps in my Monday sweater was the other strand. I did have to buy more. 
I did have to buy more of the other color. But yeah, this is one strain of peach pink drops for it and one strain of coral. I combined them to make this beautiful combination. I was inspired by the melange sweater by Petite Knit because it's two strains of fingering, but I didn't actually want to do the drop shoulder. I wanted to do a raglan. So this is what I decided to do. It was between this or the caramel sweater because that's also a good pattern, but decided to go with this. And I really should finish this if I want to wear it before summer <laughs> hits. So I sized up to four and a half millimeter needles and I hit gauge. I'm like on gauge perfectly. I don't, I always have to size up with patterns normally. I think I'm a tight knitter. Well, I don't think I exactly hit gauge. I have a 20 stitch gauge and I think the pattern, no, no, the pattern is 20 stitches. So I am exactly on gauge, row and stitch gauge. I'm doing a size small, which is now what I've decided to do with patina. I used to do mediums, but then I'm kind of like tired of all that knitting and I need a little bit of, um, I think I have enough oversized sweaters, so I am doing more of like the medium oversized. Like not super oversized, but like kind of like this. This is Elizabeth blouse. Both of these colors are discontinued, which is sad, but apparently, I, I don't even know how that happened. So like I knew the peach pink was discontinued because I actually had to get more before Wool Warehouse was out of stock with it. And then I had no idea the coral was discontinued which is good. So I definitely have enough. I have seven skeins of each and that will definitely be enough and I'll probably have some left over. Oh, the other thing, this is my second Louvre sweater. I have another one, which was actually my second sweater I ever knit and it's very cute and I still wear it. I wore it the other day and it's super comfy, but I definitely needed another one. So I did cast this on on February 19th, so it's going to be a slow knit. I love having a top-down raglan on the needles, just for whenever I need that mindless knitting. That's like my favorite thing to do, so this is going to be my on-the-go knit because I'm just on the body. It will be endless. And I can actually practice my English-style knitting on this because that's what I have been kind of doing. I'm a continental knitter, and because I really want to try color work, I have been practicing English, so that whenever I do try color work, I can do like the, can like hold it in each hand and like do it that way. So, and also I like whenever my, my wrist starts to hurt on my right, on my left hand, I can just move the yarn over to my right hand. I am really loving this, and I just, I feel like I need an, a pink turtleneck in my life. I guess it's not really a turtleneck, but I feel like I need that. That's the loop sweater by Petite Knit. I promise I have other things on my noodles that are not Petite Knit, but apparently I just decided to talk about that right at the beginning. I guess I talk about the things I'm most excited about first, so that kind of checks out because I love petite knit. So the next thing I want to talk about is a gift knit I have on the needles that I just cast on. This is the Big Barely Bonnet. It's by Pure Stitches. It's a free pattern. You hold two strands of fingering for it, but I just have this DK baby yarn. And it's going to be a bonnet, but it doesn't look like that. I don't know. I hope it works out. I'm doing the biggest size, but... The baby I plan to give this to isn't exactly that age yet, but I hope it works out. I don't know. This is just, I'm trying to finish this before it gets too warm so that he can wear it. That's what's on the needles right now for the baby, for a baby. So the baby I'm going to be gifting this to, I've actually gifted him the Ingrid sweater baby and he wears it all the time. Like he is the... He's so knit worthy, so I just, I have to knit him more things because it's so cute seeing him in the Ingrid sweater. And I think it's just so cute when you like gift something and they just wear it all the time. And I think his parents definitely appreciate gift knits. I think he's going to look so cute in it. I don't know if I'm going to make it a bear. I don't know yet. We'll see. I might not have enough yarn for it because uh, it calls for 100 grams and I'm, I don't have that. I have maybe 75 grams. 
so I really hope I'm not playing yarn chicken. And I cast it on on April 12th. I don't think I said that. It's 11 o'clock right now, and I really need to be done very soon. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit. This is the Beauty School Top by Poison Girls. I am so happy with the progress I've made on this. I have bound off the body, and I just had the sleeves to go. So I'm doing the same needle size on this as I'm doing on my Friday tee. So I, my plan is whenever I bind off on the Friday tee, I'm just going to use that same needle and do the sleeves. Actually, so for the sleeves, I'm actually using the Chow Goo Shorties, which are amazing, in like the red pack. I highly recommend those. They're great for like these smaller circumference sleeves. Like with these sleeves, you can just use a 16 inch, but with these sleeves are like a lot smaller. So you need like sometimes like nine inch. <laughs> and I really, I'm enjoying the Chow Goo shorties. So yeah, this is the beauty school top in the size small. I started on October 13th, 2022. It has been a long time coming and I need to finish it so soon. I need it off my needles. It has been a constant. I'm using Knit Picks Gloss Fingering in the colorway Harvest, which is a merino silk blend and I am loving it. I love the color a lot. It's so autumnal, which is what makes me not want to work on it right now because I need spring vibes. But um, I did the longer length of the body and I did a tie and bind off without the double knitting because I did a regular bind off and it was too tight. So normally I would do the double knitting except I already cut my yarn and I wouldn't have had enough yarn to do the double knitting and the bind off. So we just get a normal Italian bind off and I will have to say I like tubular a lot better. I did try this on and it's very pretty. I can't wait to add some sleeves to it and it'll be so cute. Okay, so the twist loop sweater that I talked about in my last podcast is on ice. So no progress has been made. So if you want to see that, go to my last podcast. So I'm not going to show it. But I will show the Louisiana sweater. So this is the Louisiana sweater by Petite Knit. This is actually gift knit for the baby. Not the baby. But the baby that I knit the Moby sweater for, his mom. <laughs> so that's why I'm giving this to. Because she really, really wanted a sweater. And I was like, I'm not going to knit you a full sweater. Then I kind of wanted to. <laughs> Because even though I said I wasn't going to, I still wanted to. I don't know. I only gift knit if I want to. And I ended up really wanting to knit her a sweater. I actually want it, though. Because how cute is it? And this is, um, I was actually show it to you. Patton's Highland Bulky on, I'm using 9mm needles. This is 80% acrylic, 20% wool, so hopefully it'll be easy for her to care for. And I started this on January 2nd, and this is the color Harbor. I have to, like, be so slow with it because the chunky needles hurt my hands. But other than that, it's fun, and it's cute. And I'm excited to give it to her because I think she'll be really happy with it. I've already shown it to her whenever, like, after I had split for the... No, before I had split for the sleeves, and she really liked it. That's the Louisiana sweater by Petite Knit, and I really want to make myself one so I will be looking into that whenever the weather is more appropriate. The next whip I have, we are just gonna ignore that I have seven whips going on. That's a problem I know and I need to reduce that but some of them are on ice so it's fine. Like the twist loop top, twist loop sweater is on ice. So the next thing I have to talk about is my last whip and that's my socks. But before I talk about my socks, I want to show you this bag. <gasps> Isn't it the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? It's beautiful. It's this, I, I got it from Hobby, which I also have some yarn to talk about from Hobby. But, so this is technically an acquisition, but I have to show it to you. It's just a strawberry bag, and you like do it like this. I have been eyeing this for a couple months, and I'm so glad I finally own it. It's so cute, and obviously strawberries are like my thing on here, so that's why I love it so much. Okay, I'm briefly going to talk about my socks because I have not knit on them, really, 
this is one in drop stored and this is the other one i have not even finished casting on it's just the vanilla sock pattern by crazy sock lady and i'm following it exactly on the medium size so 64 stitches and i really need to pick it back up those are all my whips time to get into acquisitions i only have two but i also want to talk about some non-acquisitions that i have plans for my spring knitting plans actually is coming out today as i'm filming this so kind of like you just saw the patterns i wanted it and then here's the yarn that i want to go with the pattern so the first acquisition i have is stroll from knit picks and the color cranberry heather oh my goodness it won't focus there it's this beautiful deep red like it's like a garnet and it's beautiful i don't know exactly what i want to knit with this but I bought it with the Cumulus Blouse in mind. So I think that's probably what I'm going to knit with it is the Cumulus Blouse. But we'll see. The other option was the Cozy Classic Light. I might knit that with it. Whatever I knit with it, I think it'll be gorgeous because this color is beautiful. And it was a bit different. I don't normally knit in red, but I don't actually have a red like this. The closest thing I have is my... Stockholm sweater v-neck in the drop sleeve of maroon, but that's a bit more brown. This is actually pretty red. I'm excited to cast this on. The other thing I have is my hobby acquisition. I got some baby cotton from Hobby in the color. I actually don't know what color. Color 11. It had a color name, but it won't tell me. That's what I like about nitpicks is they tell you the color on the ball band, but this is a beautiful pink, baby pink. And I've never used this before, but I'm super excited. It's 100% organic Egyptian cotton in fingering. By the way, the stroll is also fingering. I, I don't know what I want to knit with this. A cumulus tea would be beautiful in this too, but like also a poppy tea or if I meet Gage, a poppy tea, I mean, I might not meet Gage. Also a Sunday tea would be beautiful in this. So excited for this, but I'm going to wait to cast this on because I want to knit with some more wool before I fully transition into the summer fibers. The next yarn I want to talk about is not acquisitions, but I have more solid plans for these than I did last time I showed them. So I showed the Trubu in my last podcast, and I think I have come to a decision that I want to knit the Look at My Holes top by James and Watts. I was like bouncing between the corn cardigan which is actually in my last video in my spring knitting plans, but the look at my holes was not, so I was like, the corn cardigan would be really nice. But I think I want to do the corn cardigan in a some kind of like wool cotton blend, and then the look at my holes will be very pretty in this, I think. And I want the corn cardigan in a white, and I think the look at my holes will look good with this green. So this is just a beautiful apple green. And this is a very popular color right now, and I'm very excited to try it out. And I don't have anything in this color. So I don't know when I'll cast this on. Probably after we've moved, so probably in May. And maybe I'll be a significant amount done with it in my next podcast. But this is the color Celery. This is 100% rayon from Bamboo. I've never worked with this yarn before. I'm pretty excited to try it out and I think it looks good with my face. The next yarn I want to talk about is my Drops Flora in the color dark gray I think. This is this was going to be the second triangle to my half and half wrap but because I never got that far I have seven skeins of this in stash and I was thinking a cumulus blouse would be beautiful in this because Well of Knits has a dark gray cumulus blouse and it looks gorgeous on her and I need a dark gray cumulus blouse so that's probably what this is gonna become I just had to like probably had to like cut something out because my nose is congested <laughs> so congested I'm very excited for this I'm thinking more of an oversized cumulus tee and it will be like this length of my Elizabeth blouse and long sleeved that's what I'm thinking with this I think it'll look good and this is probably the closest thing I have like, this is probably the highest up on my queue right now, I think. 
So probably when I bind off on the Friday tea, I might cast this on right away. We'll see. But I've been super indecisive with what I want to knit lately. And that's one of the reasons I've been monogamous. So I hopefully, whenever I bind off on my Friday tea, I'll have a clarity of what I want to knit. Because I'm just, there's so many fingering white t-shirts out there. And I have these three fingering white yarns. And I just, there's so many options and I'm so indecisive. We'll see what actually ends up happening. I could do nothing that I said I was going to do. Who knows? We will just have to stay tuned for my next episode to see what I end up doing. That's what's in my queue. That's future plans. And now I'm going to talk about the podcast recommendation for today's episode. The person I want to recommend is Starcross Knits. I have been loving her videos so much and she's a designer and she's coming out with a similar kind of pattern to the Elizabeth blouse in an Erin White yarn and it looks so good. I really really wanted to test it like sign up to test it but I do not have the yarn in stash and I don't need to be buying yarn right now. So yeah if you want some more knitting content to watch after this video, just head on over there. That is, I think, all I have to talk about for today's video. Sorry for it being super scattered and there might be a lot of cuts in this video because there was a lot of stuff going on. I'm kind of distracted, but um, I hope it still turned out good and hopefully I'll still get a good video out of this. If you made it this far, thank you. So much for watching um leave in the comments what you were knitting on during this video if you were knitting i'm very curious to know because i'm sure y'all knit while you watched my videos let me know what you knitted on and i will see you hopefully in my next video